a little island in the middle of nowhere um, that uh, we just can't, we can't tackle that ourselves. For centuries, this remote Australian territory was almost entirely untouched by the outside world. But the otherwise idyllic beaches of the Cocos Keeling Islands are now on the receiving end of a global tide of plastic pollution, washed in from thousands of miles away. The waste from Sri Lanka, Indonesia, even as far away as China, is a growing problem for the island's 600 residents. Their lives are intimately connected with the ocean, but the amount of trash it's bringing to their home has left them feeling almost helpless. It's basically everywhere. It just keeps coming. I'm not really sure there's a lot we can do, because it's more um, the like rubbish from other countries like Malaysia and Indo that we get. So we can like clean up and everything, but then they'll just keep hammering us, putting more on to our island. A coalition of Australian environmental groups recently teamed up to take action on the islands. Lots of Lego little plastic toys. Volunteers picked up just over two tons of waste from around two miles of coast. But this was much more than a clean-up. Plastic. Plastic Items were categorised, barcodes and manufacturer details logged all entered into the Australian Marine Debris Database. And one spirits. With over 7.5 million entries, it provides the backbone of data about the amount of plastics being washed up nationally. But new research suggests even this may only offer a glimpse of the true problem. The reality of the plastic situation is that we are only skimming the surface. What is really, truly out there, we don't have a com the complete picture. There are big gaps in our understanding. By carrying out careful plastic surveys in sample areas, Dr. Jennifer Lavers has found that on average, a typical beach cleanup misses around 80% of the plastic pieces that are actually on the surface, meaning current estimates of the scale of the problem could be vastly underestimated. This is the first microplastic transect that we did yesterday and the kinds of pieces most often missed are critical to understanding the seriousness of the issue. If a fish comes along or a bird or a turtle, really any wild animal comes and consumes something like this, it looks a lot like a fish egg and it's toxic, it's just absolutely laden with chemicals on the surface. Those chemicals are now readily available to be uh, absorbed into that animal's tissues and that's where all the concern really lies. Bottle. To put this to the test, I was asked to pick up as much plastic as I could in one of the research team's sample areas. When they went back through, the theory was proved accurate. On average, a typical beach cleanup only captures around 20, perhaps 25% of the rubbish that's present on the beach. We found fragments and, and larger items. I was looking quite carefully. I mean, I would say just roughly that that's almost the same amount again that I picked up when I went through. Yes. And it's not even that small, some of this stuff, is it? These. In the, fact, the, I'd the only found a quarter tops. of the items actually That's there. Right. The situation on the Cocos Keeling Islands shows that even paradise isn't immune from ocean plastic pollution. On the contrary, these isolated shores are, in effect, a barometer for the scale of the global problem. Tom Rayner, Sky News, on the Cocos Keeling Islands. We're still ahead here on Sky News. Could Chelsea take a big step towards winning the Premier League?